morning, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation. I'm Jeff, and today on episode 129, we're taking a look at every indie game hitting the Nintendo Switch through the week ending December 19th. You can find Nindy Nation on Twitter, come chat with us on Discord, or check out some of the week's new releases with us right here on YouTube every Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern during our Nindies at Night stream. Before we get into the games, we're doing something cool this week. We're starting a community vote for our very own Nindy of the Year, so stay tuned at the end of the episode for all of the details. We've got a solid list of new releases for you, but we did miss one from last week. So let's kick off episode 129 of Nindy Nation by taking a look at THE neglected Nindy that released since episode 128. Anyone remember 12 Minutes? You know, the groundbreaking time loop game by Louis Antonio and Annapurna Interactive? The one that was delayed for like three years and brought a time loop murder puzzle with a Hollywood cast featuring Willem Dafoe, Daisy Ridley, and James McAvoy? Well, it released a couple of months ago and apparently hit the Switch last week without so much as a peep probably because it's one of the most divisive games of recent memory, with a few people claiming it's a masterpiece, but many saying it was a convoluted mess of good ideas tied together by repetitive gameplay. Either way, it's on Game Pass if you want to see more, and if you decide to pick it up, it's available now for a whopping $24.99. Now, unless you're stuck in a time loop and just want to listen to that segment over and over, don't know why you'd want to do that, Let's set our sights forward to the 16 new releases hitting the Nintendo Switch through Sunday, December 19th. On Monday, December 13th, the week hits the ground running with Shovel Knight, and oh my goodness, it has been way too long since I've said that name in the new releases. See, Shovel Knight hasn't seen a release since the King of Cards and Showdown expansions that topped off the treasure trove back at the end of 2019, so it's been probably two years to the week. Anyways, this week we get the Vine-developed Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon for 1999, and while it's definitely not the retro platformer we've come to expect, the team at Yacht Club Games has worked closely with Vine to produce a game that looks, feels, and oozes that Shovel Knight charm? That didn't read right. The game is hard to describe, so come hang out during Nindies at Night to learn if it's right for you. But my best guess would be to say that this will likely appeal to those of you who like Puzzle Quest or Puzzles and Dragons. It's a falling block puzzle game where your playable character has free reign of the board to clear out groups of enemies in a turn-based combat system of sorts that will keep the gameplay fast and frantic as you work your way through the stages, characters, and story that is included. I'm buying this one practically sight unseen because I'm a big ol' Shovel Knight fanboy, so if you're on the fence, come check it out during Nindies at Night where by then I should be able to explain the game in much deeper detail. If that's not what you're looking for, though, and you just gotta buy something on Monday, well, I guess you could check out My Universe Doctors and Nurses for $29.99. It's got all of the shallow mobile game visuals and borderline mind-numbing gameplay that looks 15 years outdated before it's even released, so I'm sure it's great. Now, can someone please page Microids and tell them to clean up this mess in eShop aisle 13 before someone steps in it? On Tuesday, December 14th, we get three new Nindies, and I'll be damned if they all don't look pretty good. Adam Nickerson, previously called Nicker Vision Studios, and now apparently going by Adam Vision Studios, dude, stop it, is one of my favorite solo developers, releasing games like Ding Dong XL, Super Bit Blaster XL, and even Missile Command Recharged, is back in the Atari driver's seat this week with his latest retro revival. Asteroids Recharged is, in my opinion, probably the toughest game to modernize, especially since the notion of what's essentially a twin-stick shooter has basically become one of the largest indie genres upon itself. If anyone can do it, though, I trust Adam to give Asteroids a spit shine, throw some cool neon colors in there, toss in some music that'll get stuck in my brain, and ignite my urge to chase some high scores. 
Asteroids Recharged launches for $9.99, and I will definitely be picking it up. So stay tuned to Nindy Nation on Twitter, Discord, and Nindies at Night to find out more about this latest Atari revival. Find confidence, change the world, and shape your surroundings with your voice. Hmm, that's way different than what I expected when I initially saw the listing for One Hand Clapping by Handy Games. It's a 2D platformer with a simple, colorful visual style that, apparently, you control by singing into your microphone? Considering the Switch doesn't have a microphone, I'm left to assume this is relegated to a button press or something. Without actually describing the game, the team at Bad Dream Games does provide some very positive messaging about it being an accessible and encouraging game, which matches the very positive reviews it's garnered since releasing over the summer via Steam Early Access. I don't know. Looks pretty cool if you're after a puzzle platforming fix, and the reviews seem to justify the $15 price. Are you planning to clap with one hand this week? <laughs> Let me know. And lastly in this Tuesday trio, Strictly Limited Games and In-In Games have dug out a 30-year-old arcade ROM and brought it to the eShop for your consideration. Clockwork Aquario is a super colorful and super Japanese action platformer, and it looks pretty fun. Given that it is 1999 and a 30-year-old arcade game, I'm not sure if it's worth that much, especially seeing as it's probably only an hour long tops, but the run, jump, pick up, and throw enemies mechanic looks fun and reminds me of Treasure's N64 gem Mischief Makers. I think I want to check this game out. What do you think? Has anyone listening or watching ever played the original? Oh, snap. On Wednesday, there's only one new indie, but boy, does it fill out that ESRB rating something fierce. Blood and gore. Intense violence. Nudity. Sexual content. What is this game? Hmm. If you have horror-themed visual novel on your answer sheet, I'd be quite surprised, but that's exactly what we get with the letter for 1999, which comes to us by way of Yang Yang Mobile and East Asia Soft. Taking Asian horror inspiration, you follow seven cursed characters in a mansion, unravel a mystery, and explore as many as 50 variations on the game's ending. It seems cool, but you know this isn't my bag. If they're your bag, tell me what you think about the letter and if it passes the sniff test. On Thursday, December 16th, the Big Thursday drop is pretty little this week and kicks off with the latest by Hewn X. This self-described pop occult mystery about a Taisho-era boy's love mystery follows a guy kicked out of school who dupes his friends into letting him mooch off of them while people are killed off across the city? I think it's a dating visual novel? Oh yeah, what's this thing called? Hashihimi of the Old Book Town Append. You think that's ridiculous? <laughs> How about the fact that it launches for $61.64? <laughs> uh, there's a demo if you want that. And hey, why not more of this stuff? Murder Diaries 3, Santa's Trail of Blood. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sounds like it was pulled from the garbage bin over at the Lifetime Movie Sweatshop. Okay. Epixer made this, and you play as a ghost following around a serial killer during Christmas break. Ten bucks. Fun. Oh no! Is the name of our next game, and I swear I've seen this one before. Anyone else find this one really familiar? It's a third person adventure where you're mostly exploring a world, but occasionally do battle or solve puzzles. I kinda like it, but I've already said more here than the team at Studio Inky Fox wrote in the description. So we'll just leave it there and say that it costs $13.59. What's next? Oh. Neon 2. That's a new name of a mobile developer. <sighs> Love Pop is a $9 mobile game where you draw lines to make a kiss float from one person to another. Basically, it rips off the entire gameplay hook of Kirby's Canvas Curse. I really like that game, but I don't think I'm going to like this one. Ah, uh, Gamazumi. What have you done this time? No, you didn't. This is just half-naked anime girls drooling over the one that's dressed like Santa. Who is the audience for this? I guess if you've ever been to the mall for Santa pictures and thought, mm, I 
I'd sure love a piece of that if it was a young anime girl. Well, then here you go. Sakura Santa is $9.99. Just don't be mad if I call you a Santa fucker. Hey, a Nindy newcomer. This one is... I'm sorry. Does that say Mick Pepper Games? All right. What'd you do to the eShop? Oh, Dinosaur Jigsaw Puzzles, Dino Puzzle Game for Kids and Toddlers, released for $15. And is the latest game for kids and toddlers to release in the puzzle game for kids and toddlers series. So if you want Dino and have kids and toddlers who like jigsaw puzzles and dinosaurs, why not try Dinosaur Jigsaw Puzzles, Dino Puzzle Game for Kids and Toddlers? If you haven't had enough spooky first-person narrative slash point-and-click adventure games, well, we've got another. But the Enigma Machine by Dolores Entertainment is intriguing with the premise of exploring the mind of an android. It fuses 90s 3D visuals and all of that old found footage style filtering to make something pretty unique. And considering it launches for $7.99, it's not that much of a risk if you decide to give it a go. Moving on to Friday the 17th, we've got three releases, two of which I have no interest in, so we'll start with those. FM Studio and Rattalaka Games have a spooky point-and-click puzzler called Forgotten Hill Disillusion. And seriously, the visuals just give me the creeps, so it's five bucks if you're interested, and we're moving on to the next. Him and Her 3 is the third game in this series in just over a year, and this generic puzzle platformer really gives the impression that the developer, Williams, said, Hey, we forgot to give this game graphics. Yeah, but what if we make that a feature? And then, Game National was like, Hey, we need to ship something next week. So Williams was all like, Look, it's not bland, it's artistic. Eh, they get mediocre reviews at best, so I'm not recommending them for 10 bucks, but let me know if I'm missing something here. Don't think I am. And then finally for the week, a game that really came out of nowhere and proving that I have absolutely no qualms with appearing biased or swayed by PR, I didn't really pay much attention to this one until I received an email from the team at Untold Tales. Aspire, Ina's Tale, was pitched to me as Limbo meets Grease, or an artistic platformer where the environment and story are just as important as the gameplay itself. With about a 5-hour runtime, the $12.99 price tag seems about right, and it's hard to deny the beauty created by yet another new Brazilian indie studio, Wondernauts. What's in the water down there? <laughs> you guys are killing it! I'm really digging what I'm seeing from Ina's Tale, so it might end up on Nindies at Night later this week. Stay tuned if you want to see more. There's some good stuff this week. Shovel Knight, Clockwork Aquaria, Aspire, and I know already that I'll love Asteroids Recharged. Let me know what you're picking up and which of these new releases you'd like to see during Nindies at Night. If you didn't find anything this week, or maybe you still have funds left over from a Black Friday binge, have no fear, citizens, because we've got some great deals this week. These are the nine indie deals at their lowest prices ever through at least December 19th. First up, we're going to do a quick run of three games sitting high atop the You haven't played this yet? list as I recommend them to everyone. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is one of the best 2D games you'll find and one of my favorites on the Switch. This gorgeous Metroid-style adventure has been upgraded in the sequel and now includes Hollow Knight-style combat, a more open world with a hub area, and looks even better than the original. You need to play Blind Forest first, but if you have and you've been holding out for the sequel, pick it up now while it's 60% off for $11.99. Hey, have you played SteamWorld Dig 2 yet? But I don't like- No, I don't care what you don't like. SteamWorld Dig 2 is $5.99 and is worth your money. Just play it. You dig, explore, do some shooty shoot, a little hacking with an axe, and you even get a jetpack. And come on, when has there ever been a bad game with a jetpack? If you haven't played SteamWorld Dig before, that's fine. You can jump right into the sequel. Just, you know, jump into the sequel. <laughs> and if you have played SteamWorld Dig 2, have you played SteamWorld Heist? This turn-based strategy game is loaded with procedurally generated levels, rogue-like mechanics, 
and RPG Elements. I kept this one at bay for a long time, but man, I will never forget when I finally picked it up on sale a few years ago and was hooked all throughout Christmas break. I think that was 2018. At 80% off for $3.99, SteamWorld Heist is another one of those games that stands completely on its own and is worth anyone giving a try. A last minute addition, thanks to the Nindy Nation Discord, thanks Nugget, is Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights, which is 25% off for $18.74. Now, in the indie world, that's pricey, yes, but let me tell ya, this is one fantastic Metroidvania. It's a lot more like a Castlevania than a Metroid, with gothic themes and RPG systems galore. Plus, the combat is much more deliberate, kinda like a Souls game, but don't let that sway your decision. If Symphony of the Night is up your alley, don't sleep on Ender Lilies. Next is a game that I've never played, and I'm not even sure if you should, but I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna talk about it later, because after hearing the story of this game's development in the book Press Reset, I just have to. The Flame and the Flood is a visually stunning survival game of sorts where you're trying to stay alive while working your way down a river, and it was developed by a group of people who were laid off after finishing work on Bioshock Infinite. This game is a passion project by all definitions, and after lukewarm sales, the Switch port actually saved the developer the Molasses Flood from going under entirely. There's a really cool story behind this game, and the people involved really put everything they got into it. So if you want to see what happens when a few developers say, this is our last shot, pick up the Flame and the Flood while it's 80% off for only $2.99. And speaking of cheap, um, gems, I guess, Mana Spark the Complete Edition is a whopping $1.99, and for a typical Nindy trifecta, I think it's pretty solid. It's an isometric RPG, so kinda think Diablo, but the combat is much more weighted and impactful, so again, it's got a bit of that Souls-like influence. It's pretty tough, but the progression feels great as you find new characters and build out various camps with the loot you find during runs. If you end up liking this game, you can easily get a dozen hours or more out of it, and that's before they included DLC packs. So if you've never played Mana Spark, this is a great time to take it for a spin. And if you need some more convincing, Mana Spark Complete Edition is jam-packed with procedurally generated dungeons, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! <laughs> One of the games that I received and played during Nindy Nation's hiatus, but never really got a chance to talk about, was Golf Club Wasteland, and I think it's great. It's a tongue-in-cheek 2D golf game where the richest people alive visit Earth to play golf among the post-apocalypse. Basically, it's a physics puzzler, and anyone who enjoys that genre or the tone of this game with its dark humor should get a kick out of it. Golf Club Wasteland is currently 25% off for $7.49. And then one of my favorite parts of Nindy Nation is getting to share with you games that I don't think many of you would have considered otherwise, especially when you turn around and tell me you loved them. And we're going to round out this week with two games that I think are exactly that. Ministry of Broadcast released in the spring of 2020 and was missed by a lot of people. If you like a great story that's well told, will make you laugh, and will also stick in your brain in between play sessions, making you yearn to know what happens next, then this game's for you. It's a cinematic platformer, think Prince of Persia, Oddworld, Flashback, and the like, but with much more narrative and a lot more puzzle solving. The story's about a man who was separated from his family after an evil 1984 Orwellian type empire takes over their country. He needs to get over the wall that separates the two worlds, and to do so, he must compete and win a reality TV show of sorts. I promise you, this game delivers. And if any of what I just shared sounds good to you, do not let Ministry of Broadcast pass you by while it's 67% off for $4.99. Lastly, for this week, following a similar recommendation in an entirely different genre, is Willie Jetman Astro Monkey's Revenge. 
As mentioned earlier, this game once again proves that jetpacks make everything better, and there's a lot more that this game has to offer, too. It's got about 10 hours of side-scrolling action, exploration, story, and light puzzle solving, all centered around an unlikely hero and his trusty jetpack. If you're looking for a 2D game that will hit you in the feels, pick up Ministry of Broadcast. If you're looking for a 2D game that will make you remember why 2D games were so much fun back in the day, pick up Willy Jetman while it's 66% off for $5.09. Gotta say, I'm really digging that list this week. Got a good mix of games that everyone should try, cheap experiences worth taking a chance on, and a couple of my own personal hidden gems. If you're picking any of these up, or you have something to share from your own experience with any of them, drop it down in the comments. Alright, we are kicking off a community-based Game of the Year discussion but we need your help to build three solid lists for everyone to vote on. Either in the YouTube comments below or in the Nindy Goaty channel on Discord, your task for this week is to give me the following. Your three favorite indies from 2021, your three favorite indies that you played for the first time this year but released prior, and your three favorite indie surprises that you picked up this year because of a sale. There might be some crossover in those last two categories, and if so, that's fine. Got it? Three lists, three games each, comments or Discord, we'll gather the results, crunch the numbers, and release some polls for official voting next week. Probably on YouTube's community tab. You guys seem to like engaging with that. Nindies at Night is back on Thursday this week, but I'm not sure all of what we'll be playing. Definitely Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, but I have a feeling after a few minutes of that, everyone will get the gist. So should we also do Loop Hero? Check out Ina's Tale? Asteroids Recharged? Or something else? Let me know what you want to see, and be sure to join us this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern. If you want to see my middle-of-the-night game industry rants, go follow Nindy Nation on Twitter. And if you want to chat with a great group of indie fans and all-around good people, come hang out with us on Discord. We would love to have you. Links to everything mentioned are down in the description, and if you want to help us grow, like this video, share it in your own gaming or indie communities, and if you haven't yet, subscribe for more weekly content all about indies on the Switch. Otherwise, that's it for today. It's hard to believe that next week is already Christmas. While the new releases are slowing, we've still got a couple games in particular that I'm really excited to check out, and you will be too if you like children cheering and air horns. <laughs> But that's all for next week, citizens. So until then, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 129. And remember, no matter what type of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. <laughs>